Okay, you guys, uh, welcome to KGB Bible Stories. Today we have another Bible study. I promise you guys that we're going to talk about a little bit more deeper into the subject of the state of the dead. Or Many people believe that uh, you can speak to the dead. And so we're going to have a Bible study. We want to bring in our Bible. And we want to open with a word of prayer. And we're going to go ahead and, and dive in into the Word of God. So let us pray that the Lord may come and teach us and guide us here in His Word. And so, let's go ahead and open our Bibles to the book of Isaiah, chapter 8, verse 19, and then we're going to pray. <clears throat> Isaiah, chapter 8, verse 19, and I'm going to turn the camera the other way. So you can see my beautiful fell background. There it is. Perfect. Okay, so we're turning to Isaiah 8, 19. Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to thee in the name of Jesus and your Holy Spirit to be with us as we study this really serious topic of what happens when people die. And is it okay for us to reach people who talk to, quote unquote, the dead? Bless us, O Lord. Come and teach us and forgive us for our sins. We pray in Jesus' holy name. Amen. In the book of Isaiah, chapter um, 8, verse 19, it says... And when they shall say unto you, Seek unto them that have familiar spirits, and unto wizards that peace, <coughs> and that mutter, should not a people seek unto their God? So there's going to be people uh, that are going to say, Go seek unto these familiar things. Go look for a witch, and she's going to tell you your future, your fortune, who you're going to marry, all of those wicked things. And they're going to tell you, go talk to this, your dead grandma, your dead uncle, and go make peace with them, blah, 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 pure deceptions. And so, God tells us, don't seek those things, but rather, should not a people seek unto their God for the living to the dead? And so, God is telling us, don't go to those things, but rather seek God. And as a matter of fact, the word familiar, which you see here in Isaiah 19, we're going to look up that word familiar spirits, necromancy, wizards, and peep, and mutter. Okay, all of those things found in Isaiah 8, 19. When they shall send to you, seek unto them that have familiar spirits. So that word familiar spirits means ghost, spirits of the dead, um, the practice of necromancy. And so, these familiar spirits are none other than unclean demons that are pretending. And we're going to see that. I'm not going to go ahead of myself. We're going to see that in the Word. Now, what about this? The, remember, familiar spirits these are those people that are practicing necromancy. And so, the definition for necromancy is the supposed practice of communicating with the dead, especially in order to predict the future. Many people were not right with their family members or they forgot to tell them something and then now they're like, oh, I wish I would have done this right. And so what happens, they go to look for the wizard witch that can bring up the supposed dead and now they communicate with them. Let's look at the next definition here, which is the word peep. <coughs> and that word peep is right here. Um, and I said 819, it means to cry out. Um, that would be the Hebrew definition. It also means to begin to appear. You know, when these wizards or necromancy men or women, they come and call upon the dead, and they, the unclean spirits that transform themselves into these dead spirits, supposedly, they begin to appear. So that word to peep means to cry. They begin to appear, to make the first appearance to each or come forth from concealment as though a narrow avenue. It also means to mourn, to howl, to speak. And now the other word, mutter, it means to utter words with a low voice and compressed lips, with soulnessness or in complaint to grumble or to mourn. And by the way, I'm not recording here. Did I do it wrong? Give me one moment. Okay. So read I said 819, you guys, and we're looking at the word familiar spirits, necromancy, wizards, and peep. And so 
The familiar spirits are ghosts or spirits, unclean spirits. And also it has a connection with the practice of necromancy. Necromancy is a supposed practice of the communicating with the dead. And the wizard is one who practices magic, a sorcerer or a magician. The word peep it means to cry out. It also means to begin to appear, to make the first appearance, to mourn, to howl, to speak, to issue or come forth from concealment. You know, as a matter of fact, the world believes that there exists a world where the um, people that are dead reign in there. They're living there, but that is all false doctrine. We're going to continue to see that in the Bible. Now, the word mutter from Isaiah 19, all of those definitions come from that um, I say in 19 it says mutter to utter words with a low voice and compressed lips so can you say a word with your lips closed mm. what can you say so that's what it means to mutter with sullenness or complain or grumble or to murmur so when these demons are coming up they're beginning to appear they start to mutter to say oh I've been in the grave and all that drama so they're in the grave, so they have to see them challenge with their voice and difficulty, okay? So now in Exodus 20 to 18, let's turn there with our Bibles. Um, Exodus chapter 22, verse 18, it says, Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. And that whole word, thou shalt not suffer, that means there shouldn't be no witch among you guys. And... No witch should be alive among you guys. And as a matter of fact, there was a time that this, um, there was a king who got rid of all of the spiritualistic doctrines and junks of talking to the dead, the necromancers, the witch, the wizards. He got rid of everything. And so let's look at the definition of a witch. A witch is a woman who by compact with the devil practices sorcery and enchantment. So witches... Necromancers, wizards, those are people who are giving themselves to become a made of contact with the devil, to be able to do such wicked practices and to be in control of the demons to pretend themselves that they are the that they are the the familiar of people. Oh, there's my mom, there's my daughter, there's this to deceive people. Remember Matthew twenty four four, I believe it is. It says, let no man deceive you. Deuteronomy 18.10. I'm going to give you guys some time to turn there. Deuteronomy 18.10. There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire. Or that useth divination or an observer of times. And so there's supposed to be no person that uses divination and we know that wizards use divination a necromancer use divination a witch and that divination means to divine the future oh in the future you're going to do this and the, and people are so antsy to know these things they want to go ahead of god's plans they don't want to seek god and his word for instruction and doctrine they want a human being that knows nothing but lies that the devil gives them to tell them their future and so there should be none among those things and also this um, that says that make it his son or daughter pass through the fire we're gonna look at that in a moment which it has to do with the worship of Molech in that time they used to have this false god called Molech it was a big statue and inside of his I don't know somewhere in that statue there was a hole where they would put a bunch of fire and they would put their little babies and give it to Molech, their false god, and will, the baby will burn alive. And that is very serious. As a matter of fact, there was a time when the children of Israel were worshiping Molech. They were rebellious and wicked, and they were not following the Lord at that moment and period of time. And so let's go to Leviticus 18.21. It says, And thou shalt not let any of thy seed pass through the fire to Molech, neither shalt thou profane the name of the Lord thy God. So what happens to those people who are worshiping the false god Molech? 
They are profaning the name of, of thy God, of God. It says in verse uh, Leviticus 22, just two chapters ahead to the right. Leviticus 22, Leviticus chapter 20, verse 2. Again, thou shalt say to the children of Israel, Whosoever he be of the children of Israel, which the strangers that sojourn in Israel, that giveth any of his seeds unto Molech, he shall surely be put to death. The people of the land shall stone him with stones. So God didn't want them to be doing that evil things. Neither to have a witch, neither to use them, neither to do divination. All of those things were abomination unto the Lord. Even Molech worship, which included sacrificing their children. And it says in Leviticus 23, I will set my face against that man. Or it could have been a woman too, who did such wickedness. I will set my face against that man, and I will cut him off from among his people, because he hath given his seed unto Molech, to defile my sanctuary, and to profane my holy name. And we know that we human beings are a sanctuary, where the Holy Spirit wants to dwell in us. And so when we give, when we, if we do these wicked things, we are defiling our bodies. We're hearing lies from the devil. We go see divination. That's all lies. And we are being, and we're bringing demons with us. If we go see that, then demons come with you. And, they're, and they bind you. Like if you were carrying thousands and thousands of pounds and chains in your body, and you won't be able to get rid of that unless you come to the foot of the cross and ask God to give you liberty. And repentance of your sins those demons will not stop following you and you are going to want to be more involved in that spiritualistic practices and you're going to be a servant to the devil and not a servant of Christ and then I have a comment here which is my own personal comment it says I wonder why they gave those children to a false God to be burned in the fire I wonder why did the parents want no responsibility of raising their children? Or did they just thought they pleased, or they just thought they were pleasing their false God by doing this? I tell you one thing that that was very wicked in the sight of the Lord. The Lord thought that was so wrong for them to do. Let's go to Leviticus 19.31. And trust me, this subject of not doing these evil things, to visit witches, sorcerers, necromancers, uh, to do the worship of false gods, even including Molech, all of these things are evil. And not only do we see it in the Old Testament, but also in the New Testament and Old Testament. Okay, so Leviticus 19.31, regard not them that have familiar spirits, neither seek after wizards to be defiled by them. I am the Lord your God. Now the word right there that says regard not them, it means not to turn to them. Stay away from them and don't do that. Now the word, uh, now the word uh, neither seek, it means do not search for such wicked things. God tells us, stay away from those things. If you want to displease the Lord and you don't want to be righteous, then you, you will be doing those things. But if you want the Lord Jesus to be in your heart, you want to please God, and you want God to purify you from sins and to forgive you of your sins, and you want to stay away from sin, and you don't want demons in your house and your children, then you want to stay away from those things. No one that do these practices can enter into the kingdom of heaven except they repent. Let's go to the next page. Let's look at the word defiled. Remember it says right here in Leviticus 1931. Regard not them that have familiar spirits, neither seek after wizards to be defiled by them. I am the Lord your God. So let's look at the word defiled. The word defiled means to become unclean, to be unclean, to be made impure, made dirty or full, polluted, soiled, corrupted, violated, vitiated. So those words is how you're going to become if you're seeking after such 
spiritualistic practices. Now, in the Acts 13, verse 6, let's turn our Bibles to the New Testament. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the Acts chapter 13, verse 6, it says, we're going to read verse 6 through 11, Acts 13, 6 through 11. And when they had gone through the Isle of Paphos, they found a certain, what does it say right there? A sorcerer, right? And a false prophet. So all sorcerers, all witches, all necromancers are false prophets. They don't have the gospel. They just want to keep you in sin and in wickedness and abominable, abominable practices. So this certain sorcerer, a false prophet, a Jew, he was named Bar Jesus, which was with the deputy of the country, Sergius Paulus, a prudent man who called for Barnabas and Saul and desired to hear the word of God. So there was this man, Sergius, who wanted to hear the word of God, but this man, Bar Jesus, is going to try to prevent him. Interesting. And so let's look at verse 8. But Elimas, the sorcerer, Uh, for so is this his name by interpretation. So it's both his names, Bar Jesus and Elamas, okay? We stood them seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. Verse 9 Then Saul, who is also called Paul, fell with the Holy Ghost, set his eyes upon him, and said, All full of mischief. So he was preventing that man so he can hear the gospel. And what did Paul tell him in the New Testament, dear friends? What is Paul saying? All oh, full of mischief. That mischief means evil. You're just about doing evil. All oh, full of, of all mischief, that child of the devil, the enemy of all right of all righteousness, will thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? And verse 11, and now behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thee. And thou shalt be blind, not seeing the sun for a season. And, in, and immediately there fell on him a mist and a darkness. And he went about seeking someone to lead him by the hand. So the Lord allowed him to be blind because he was doing mischievousness. He was being <laughs> the child of the devil. So all of those people that want to practice necromancy, sorcery, seeking witchcraft, tarot reading, horoscope reading, all of those are being the child of the devil. If you go about to hear them, you know what you're going to become. You will become a child of the devil. Don't think because, oh, I'm a Christian, God's going to send his angels and I could just hear a little bit. No, you don't go that, okay? And we're going to continue reading. The Bible is so clear. We're not going to have no doubt when this Bible study is done. Leviticus 18, 21. And then we're going to go to Leviticus 22. I think I already read that verse. Yeah, I already read those two verses. Okay, let's go to... Um, let's go to Leviticus 20, verse 6. It says, And the soul that turneth after such as have familiar spirits, and after wizards, to go whoring after them, so notice what's going to happen with those people that they think they're strong enough to go mess with those things and nothing's going to happen. And even to those who are involved in spiritualism, this is called spiritualism, seeking for someone to read you the future, to talk to the dead. All of those things are, is called spiritualism. And that is a doctrine of hell. It's a doctrine and the false lies of the devil. So notice what it says, And the soul that turneth after such as have familiar spirits, and after wizards to go whoring after them, I will even set my face against that soul, and I will cut him off from among his people. Verse 7, Sanctify yourselves therefore, and be ye holy, for I am the Lord your God. So you can either be sanctified and be holy, and abstain from those things which are wickedness, or you can stay in those wickedness and be the child of the devil. God forbid you choose the wrong path. But God gives us a free will to choose. And we want to choose God because he loved us first. And we want to love him back. 
And if God tells us to stay away those things, then we ought to obey. And he 